Hello everyone, in the last organic chemistry video, we introduced the idea about nucleophilic substitution with introducing SN1 and SN2 reaction pathways. Throughout this video, we're going to talk about the second set, E1 and E2 beta elimination pathways. In order to do so, I want us to conceptualize one more time what we were looking at with nucleophilic substitution. We had a molecule that was attached to a very electronegative element that would pull on the electrons, allowing there to be an electrophilic carbon. So the incoming nucleophile will attack that electrophilic carbon, resulting in a substitution of a group. You gotta remember, when the nucleophile is gonna pull electron density off of the carbon it's attached to, it's also pulling electron density off of the hydrogens that carbon is attached to because as the electron density leaves the carbon, the carbon is gonna start pulling electron density off of the hydrogens. It's kind of like a domino effect. This is what happens in beta elimination reactions. For example, the reaction you're seeing here is an E1 pathway, a lot like how the SN1 pathway was two steps with the formation of a carbocation E1 pathways are very similar. The leaving group leaves, and we form a carbocation. But instead of attacking the electrophilic carbon, the base pulls a hydrogen off of a beta carbon, or a carbon right next to the carbocation carbon. This results the electrons of the beta carbon to be migrated to form a double bond between the two carbons. Let's investigate a little further. We have the nucleophile acting as a base since it's ripping off a proton from that beta carbon. This results in the electrons on that beta carbon to be promoted to form a double bond between itself and the carbocation carbon. The reason why the base attacks the beta hydrogen is because if it attacked the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, or the carbon with the positive charge, it won't be able to form a double bond. Through attacking that beta hydrogen, the electrons can be promoted to form that double bond to suffice that positive charge on the alpha carbon. It's the fact that our base is attacking the beta hydrogen throughout this reaction, E1 pathways are really similar to SN1 pathways. They prefer tertiary or secondary carbocation since we have a carbocation intermediate. Throughout this example that we've been analyzing, it doesn't really matter what beta carbon our base attacks, since we're going to form the same double bond regardless. But this isn't always the case. We've been looking at the elimination process of 2 iodopropane. But what about 2 bromobutane? In this process, we have two different beta carbons. And one product is going to be the major, and one is going to result in the minor. And it all depends on how substituted the formed double bond is. If our nucleophile decides to attack a beta hydrogen off of the third carbon, it's going to result in a substituted double bond in which we call the Zeistef product. It's because it's the most substituted double bond product we can form throughout this elimination process. If it attacks a beta hydrogen from the first carbon, we're going to result in what we call a Hoffman product, not as substituted. Remember, when we talk about double bonds and substituted regions, we got to remember that the amount of alkyl chains or functional groups on the double bond result in it being substituted. Oh, we can see the increase of stability of the double bond as we put more and more alkyl chains on the double bond carbons hence substituting the double bond. The thing that you've probably noticed is that through elimination, we form a double bond. This means that we need at least two carbons throughout a reaction. And we've said that E1 pathways prefer tertiary and secondary, but what about primary? It's still connected to one other carbon. And just as we had SN2 nucleophilic substitution reactions where the nucleophile favored not so substituted alkyl chains to attack in one step, E2 pathways are very similar. They prefer not so substituted alkyl chains such as primary, and it happens in one step. Usually preferring a strong base, the base is going to rip a proton off of a beta carbon, pushing the leaving group off, all in one step. 
Because this happens in one step, the base favors anticoplanar geometry, meaning that it favors a hydrogen on the beta carbon that's in this different spatial arrangement than that of the leaving group. Because remember, the leaving group has an increase in electron density, so it wants to be able to attack from the other end. E2 pathways favor primary carbons and rarely secondary carbons. Because of this, it's not going to be like the E1 pathway, where we had two products. E2 products usually are just one. So we don't have the issue about what's the major or the minor products when it comes to E2 pathways. We've talked about both E1 and E2 reaction pathways. We forgot to ask ourselves one question. Why do elimination when we can do nucleophilic substitution? In some cases, nucleophilic substitution is hard. If we have a bulky electrophile or a bulky nucleophile, bulky means that there's a lot of alkyl chains or extensions or branches to our carbon chain. The more branches we have, the more chances of steric hindrance between the electrophile and the nucleophile, making it hard for our nucleophile to go in there and attack the electrophilic carbon. This is why elimination is favored when we have a bulky base nucleophile or a bulky electrophile. It's a lot easier to pull off an out of branch hydrogen than it is to go inside and attack the electrophilic carbon. Throughout the last video, we focused on nucleophilic substitution, and with this video, we focus on elimination pathways. In the next few videos, we're going to be focusing on how to distinguish between doing an elimination or a nucleophilic substitution pathway depending on the situations of the reaction, because sometimes these two pathways are competing. Remember, all the infographics that you see me use throughout this video are for free download on my website. And I hope this video helped, and have a great day!